Mike, Jeff, Sam. Hello. 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 Jeff is muted. Yep. Looks that way. That's it. So, how's life? Uh, it's all right. Could be better. I could be retired already. I'm starting to count the days myself. Well, the years myself. <laughs> It'll be here before you know it. Uh, they will be here. Sometimes when things go too smooth, you're afraid that the shoe's going to drop on the other side. Things have been going really good for me lately. Getting lots done here around the house and outside and little jobs and that's good. Well, I've been on a roll for a while anyway. I see your emails. I see Jim just sent one out from what we were kind of working on on the Saturday. I don't know. He, he sent it just moments ago, I think. Yep. I got I it. I saw it. Yeah. So we were out there for about four or five hours Saturday and <clears throat> went to both places and so anyway, and I forwarded uh, the uh, layout to Dan. I haven't heard back from him. I'm not going to bother him right now, but I will uh, call him probably as this week goes along and uh, just confirm that he did get it and that we are dead serious about getting this done. Yep. Well, I, I, got an, I got an email from... Dave Mercia this morning, he found the stakes that the flags that you set out at Mankey and he thought we were, and he complained to me, he thought we were going to start doing construction behind his back. Oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> he says he's got, they've got some kind of event going on out there this Saturday. The, you know, the Mankey yeah. grounds and. And I, I told him we're, we don't have a definite date yet for laying the foundation, but we are, we are set to do it later this year. Yeah. I'll tell you, I don't need people with how negativity say, or roadblocks. How can he say behind his back when he's been getting emails for a long time and he didn't even well, want to. He, he didn't, well, he didn't actually say behind his back, but Apparently, he would have been happier if Jim and Mike had told him beforehand that they were going out to uh, 
set up the flags. He didn't want to meet with us. He, he said what we had planned was okay. Yes, and I remember it, that. And it's preliminary, and that's why Jim and I did it, because we figured, well, you know, let's get it staked out. So if somebody does have a problem that we have to move it one direction or the other, that we can do it, you know. Um, and come so, to think of it, he didn't complain when you set the stakes out for the roll-off building. Yeah, right. <laughs> so so also the only comment he had when we laid out stakes before was to make sure that we left enough room for them to mow around the building. All right, let's see. What does he let me say here? Uh, uh, this morning, staff and I noticed the orange flags on the proposed expansion area. Please keep us informed about plans, progress, and more importantly, construction dates to avoid any conflict of site use. We have our Halloween events next Saturday, October 23rd. That includes the Menke site area. That's all he said. So did he ask your permission to use that? I mean, you're the one that it's leased to. No, he didn't. Yeah, well, he's not going to. No, I'm just saying, though, you know, they, they need to uh, understand that if this is going to be a cooperative type of situation, he can't ask any more of QCS or St. Amber than what he's willing to do. Yeah. He wants us to keep him posted on what's going on. He needs to keep us posted, not, you know, just a by chance statement. Oh, by the way, I saw your flags. And oh, by the way, uh, we've got an event out there next week. Well, I, I when I uh, texted Dan with the three photos and uh, everything that um, um, I told him, I said, it, it, we definitely need, you know, at least a two or three day notice because I got to put that cage together, which won't take long, but um, it would be, you know, so that we're aware too that Dan just doesn't call me in the morning to say, hey, we're ready to go today, you know, I I told him, I said, give us a little heads up here. So, so Mike, I, I think I understand how that would work. But so the first day he goes out there, I'm assuming he's going to kind of level stuff around or whatever and uh, put some forms around, dig the hole. Would he be pouring that pier the first day? i tell you what, as organized as that guy is, he could do the whole thing in a day. Okay. Okay. I guess I was trying to give you a little bit of, uh, feeling of flexibility that even if he went out there the first day, maybe he wouldn't be ready for you. But yeah, if he's that kind of guy that he might be able to go over there and, you know, yeah, there's no reason you can't do it all at once. I'm not saying he can't, but. Right. I mean, he has a crew of three or four, five guys besides calling for the cement and um, uh, he's got the equipment. I haven't seen his boring machine because he didn't need that here but he says he has it. And uh, the only thing I could see is, is that he could bore the hole. And when he bores it, he won't have to make it oversized necessarily. So if he can get his 24 inch tube, uh, cardboard tube down, and we set it to the height of the- uh, Top of the slab. The, the, yeah, because we measured uh, the height of the dome at Sherman Park and it's 79 inches off the floor and that pier is flat with the floor Good. and the um, uh, we measured the minky roll off I wanted to see because if we put the 12 inch in there that we're not too far above or below so that when we look out to the lower edges that were not obstructed with the view and how be that thing was 79 inches too. Perfect. So, um, he, could set, he could set the pier and, um, you know, bore that out, put the tube in, pour the cement, and he might not have to hardly backfill it, uh, the, the pier. And then he goes right in and, uh, where's the rest of it around the center tube? Yeah. And it'll all be level. We're not going to raise the pier up at all uh, mm -hmm. because it's 79 inches both places and that's what we're going to go off of for the 12 inch. So is he going to supply the sonnet tube for that or should we be proactive and get one ordered in? 
Well, when he calls me, I'll find that out. But uh, because it, I know I checked on the sauna tube from this place, and it was going to take him almost three weeks to get it to me. Well, maybe I need to call uh, Stetson's out in Eldridge. They're in Rock oh. Island also, and see if they do have 24. When I was out there this spring, uh, they had all kinds of cardboard tube because I go out there for urethane caulk to caulk cracks a lot. Well, I didn't know they had. That would be great because um, I need some too for me. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But like you said, with this world the way it is, it doesn't hurt to check and double check because you, you just never know. You know, if you want to get an eight foot piece of it's cheaper, I'll pay for half of it and keep the other half for me. Yeah. Because um, sometimes they sell it in lengths and, you know, they don't right. give you any discount if you need it cut off. Yeah. Well, Dan thought his biggest size was a 24 and I'm hoping it is. I hope it's not 22. I'm hoping it's 24 diameter. Yeah. So, uh, but you're right. I should call Stetson's to just double check that they've got it or Gerke Robertson or whoever else sells it because we don't want to come up short with that. <laughs> yeah. So I'll do that tomorrow. Well, we could do it without sauna tube. And just have them frame in a, a square frame, just bore out the 24 inch hole and then, you know, make a right. 24 by 24 square if we can't get sonotube. But the, yeah. the, the real way of doing it, sonotube. Yeah. You know. Does the sonotube, does that kind of act as our expansion joint and our um, vibration dampening between the slab and that? Or, or do you use the sonotube and then you put something else around? I don't know. Oh, I never thought of that, but I would think that really thick dense cardboard uh if somebody's jumping around it is an insulator between the pier and the, okay. the actual slab yeah i i've never seen anybody do anything other than just put sonar tube in i never heard of anybody like putting it to the ground and then wrapping it with you know that regular tar tar expansion joint or, or leaving a gap and filling it with caulkers i've never heard of anybody doing that so i just didn't know yeah, i didn't think of that but that I would think that cardboard tube, dense cardboard tube would be an insulator from the slab. And also if the slab moves at all, it, it's a slide joint kind of. It gives it a little bit of give. Yeah. Okay, good. But yeah, if you can't get the size that the, the length that you need for out there. Yeah. Um, it is, might is come that, eight foot. What's that? Maybe it comes in eight foot lengths. I don't know. Yeah, I know that... Um, when I wanted it, um, I, I thought it was uh, eight foot sections. So, yeah. But maybe it, maybe the club wants to keep it for the roll off. Although you'll need two over there anyway, so that's two more four foot, another eight foot. But I, I'd be happy, you know. Like I said, if it, if you can't get your four foot piece and you know cut it to forty two or whatever you need to do, I'll buy the other half. Yeah. Okay. I'll check with them. Hi, Rolando. You're muted. Yep. Hi. How are you? I'm outside. You're gonna you're gonna be our man in the field tonight. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at Jupiter right now. Cool. Hmm. Pretty clear out. Yes. Comes our Pac Man. Pac Man. He's looking at Jupiter too. Whoa. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? Uh, same old. Doing really well then, right? Yep. Well, I think I, I scared off, half, scared half my astronomy students from showing up today. Lab last week's midterm did really tough and i i keep i keep telling myself i had this one professor in graduate school you talk about tough tests he gave tests so tough if you got a 60 percent correct on one of his tests that was an a yeah i had some professors like that too they didn't expect you to 
get 100% on the test. Mm. And you, nobody ever did. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> Maybe I should wait until quarter to seven to start these general meetings instead of six thirty. That's so much dead space well no if you wanted to you, what you could do is leave it at 6 30 and um call like like a um a mini board meeting before to go over anything that needs to be you know like we, we spent a lot of this time talking about the observatory and that that's cool mm -hmm. hmm. do we have a regular presentation tonight <sighs> not that i not that no i Elections. Does, any, does anyone want to give one? I think Ellen should. I can always do some sort of a presentation. Hmm. I don't have anything uh, specifically prepared, but I can show you some pictures from uh, Saturday night and Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Actually, does anyone have anyone have pictures from the observe the moon? Yeah. Um, since we didn't do any imaging, um, I just got a couple pictures of us that had scopes set up there. But oh. Oh, well, that, that's sure. Howard, yeah. I'm seeing fire. Rolando, am I seeing fireflies in the background? A red light. Howard, you there? He's our silent partner tonight. Hmm. Yes. We really need to get some presentations for these meetings. I mean, we've asked, we've asked several times, but like, I never got, I never, I never get any emails of ideas. Any, any of you? No. Yeah, I used to just try to do a variety. Well, January's meeting, I could always do my usual field report from the AAS conference. Those are always interesting. I always enjoyed hearing about what you guys did there. It's in Salt Lake City this time. Um, I don't, I don't know how big it's going to be. This is the first in-person meeting they've had since oof, almost two years. And they've got an they've got an option to attend virtually instead of in person. Actually, I, I had to send them JPEGs of my vaccination card before they'd even let me register in person. Wow. Yeah, if you wanted tonight to give a little bit of a, any kind of update on meeting at St. Ambrose again, I had one or two people ask me about that if it was still meeting at Rogowski and getting checked in and all that kind of good stuff? As far as I know, yes. Visitors still have to check in. Allen's pack deal works pretty slick when they got the Butterworth going and the, and the Zoom. So do either or maybe get members that don't want to come. They attend Zoom and yet members that want to socialize more can come to uh, St. Ambrose. Well, again, with the hard part with St. Ambrose, before you can go into the building, you have yeah. to go to the Rogowski Center. 
yeah. talk about your vaccination, get checked in, then drive all the way over to. Yeah. I, I think Galvin Fine Arts is also a, a check-in check-in center. Oh, I didn't. Know, that'd be good to know. Yeah, I mean, from there you can walk to McCarthy. Right. I'd have to ask about getting a room reserved for us third Monday evenings. And I think Jim Kiss isn't there anymore. So I'd have to find out who's doing the room assignments now. Colder weather coming. More people probably aren't going to want to be out anyway, but I hate to have people come for two or three people show up and the other six or eight or 10 are on Zoom, but. Hmm. But I think that Zoom thing is good, but uh, I like the idea of socializing once in a while. And yeah, we've, to tried to, we've been trying to do a combination where we meet at the Butterworth and there, there might be, I don't know, eight or 10 people show up there and then the rest, you know, show up via Zoom. That seems to work fairly well. And I'd also have to contact IT to see how we could do something like that with the equipment at Ambrose. Yeah. Well, we can do that at Ambrose easy enough. You've got a computer there, set. How are you? Good. All you have to do is log into Zoom there and share the screen like we normally do. Like to see Saturn? Uh, <laughs> uh, hang on a minute. Uh, according to Zoom, you're muted, Howard. Let's see if I can unmute. I know Howard told me that he didn't know if his if he had a mic right. or if his mic would work. So usually they're built into the computers. I don't know many that don't. I know some of them don't have cameras. But well, most of them have microphones built in. But if it's a laptop, you you would have both of those built in. A, de a desktop, that's a toss up. Yeah, our work laptops don't have cameras. They don't allow them. But they all have microphones for for uh, WebEx and all that. They might see something. So Howard assumes that he'll at least be able to listen. If we don't hear from him, that may be that he doesn't have the ability to uh, communicate one way. Okay. And I guess he can always send us a text message. Yeah, there's a chat feature on there. He should be able to use and send a chat. To everybody he's, yeah, he's been he's been using it okay because he's only doing it to you then maybe i don't know because i haven't been seeing that oh i see him now okay there i'm trying to upload those files and it was covering that that box okay right well if, if you click on chat you'd open it you open a chat window you can even see him then I wonder if Howard's clicked on his mute button because if he doesn't have a microphone, he'll get a message that'll tell him that there's no device or something. I'm, I'm only seeing a mute symbol next to his name on mine. No, I, I mean him. I'm... He'd have to uncheck because we wouldn't know whether he's got a microphone or not. If he doesn't have a mic, it'd probably show his mute <laughs> to us. But I don't know. It'll show something different for him if he clicks on it. I was just looking to see if there's some way I could find I could find out, and I it's nothing so far. Hey Howard, if you can hear me, uh, that little there's a little microphone icon right next to your name, uh, where your little rectangle is. See if you can click on that and see what it says. You might have to stand up on here, but look in this eyepiece right here. Can you see the rings? 
or not. You can go up a little bit further if you want. Rolando, who's with you? Close this eye. The neighbor, I think. He's doing outreach. <laughs> How bad are you? Well, okay, so there's this, there's this thing right here that you can adjust. Where's your hand here? Let's take this hand, put it over here, and you can turn that real slow and see if it gets any else. See if it gets fuzzier, go the other way. Slow too. I can see a big round thing. It's not the big moon. round thing. So it it kind of yeah. looks like a like a That's little Jupiter is one of the biggest round things in the solar around. system. It's pretty small compared to you know, Jupiter over here. <laughs> Rusty and Cecil joining us. Yeah, nothing. Can't see the ring. <laughs> well, it, do you even know what you're looking for, honey? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, yeah, let's try. We'll go to Jupiter and see. That should be bigger. This is a lot bigger than Emmy's telescope she had, isn't it? Well, let's see. Can you see anything? It's really boring. Okay, let's see here. No, I don't see it there. Mm -hmm. Oh, there. Having an online star party. Well, I move that we start the meeting. It's seven o'clock. You have a second? Yep. All in favor? I uh, see it before uh, the moon comes up because it's too <clears throat> bright. All right. Evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Decent like turnout you know, tonight. See a, like a dot and then you oh. see the moons around it. Let's see. Did everyone get the? Uh, I can see a dot. Email with the agenda that I sent out. And you see moons. One circle here. I do have the agenda in front of me. Okay. Okay, so those are the moons that are last around. month's Remember meeting the has day. been recorded and posted on the Ambrose Astro YouTube, YouTube channel. You want to mute Rolando? The planet has moon, a moon or multiple moons that go around. So think, there we go. Okay. So last month's meeting has been recorded and posted on the Ambrose Astro YouTube channel. Make a motion to accept that as the minutes for the last meeting. I'll make a motion to accept your recording that you uploaded from the last meeting. Second. Second. All right. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So, past events. QCAS had a public night on September 25th. I seem to recall that that one was good, clear Hello. skies and a pretty good turnout. Yes, Howard. Yeah, I finally got it. Hi, Howard. Yeah, I went to the, the three dots on the side and got in on my name and clicked the microphone. Yay, yeah. way to go, Howard. Yeah, you won't <laughs> see this. This laptop doesn't have a camera on, so you'll just hear me. Okay. All right. September 25th. September 25th. Clear skies. Good outing. Really decent turnout, as I remember. Any comments? That was the scout one, right? No, that, that the scout one, wasn't that October 2nd? Maybe it was. I get them all confused. So do I. But I do remember the scout one on October 2nd was clouded out, unfortunately. Yep. But we have still... Jeff and I gave them a guided tour of the facility, showed them the scopes and the roll-off building and the dome. 
And then they just asked a ton of questions of us. Yeah, we did that moon presentation too. And they took uh, some handouts on the moon and uh, some handouts on light pollution. But yeah, it actually, we could have actually went longer if it wasn't so late that they had to go to bed. Our astronomy. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Jeff, and Jeff and I actually float around the idea of doing like a sort of astronomy camp in, uh, in town. To su- possibly to supplement what we do. And I, and I mentioned to him that the engineering department, the chemistry department, and a few other departments at St. Ambrose, they do summer camps for students as well. They, they, do, they do summer camps. So, of course, their camps can last up to a week or more. We're just talking about maybe like an overnight thing at, at, at the most. Uh, it's just anyway it's just an odd idea we're floating around right now don't know of anything nothing definite so far uh, I, think, I think uh bringing bringing it closer to town would uh be good it would be a good idea mm. yeah that's what we we're thinking not so far out of town might be it might get more uh more interest, more, yeah, more publicity. Yeah, a lot of people aren't going to drive clear out to uh, Dixon, Iowa, at night um, to try to find that place. And some will, but maybe they'll see it when we bring it closer to town. It won't be as dark a sky, but might spark their interest and then get them to come out to uh, Minky. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that kind of thing would happen with Pack because. Uh, <clears throat> I know five, six, seven, eight years ago, we didn't really want to do a whole lot of public outreach because that's kind of not where the club was geared uh, toward going. And uh, not only that, but PAC was doing such an excellent job in doing that. We thought that it might be a little bit redundant having two of the same thing going all the time. So uh, we'd hope to get more people kind of gleaned off of PAC's event to actually come out. Those that really got interested a lot could come out to a dark site and use large telescopes and that type of thing. So uh, that didn't pan out as much as I was hoping it would, but uh, yeah, we got a little, be a little bit careful and see what club members want, because as it is now, we don't get a lot of people, a lot of club participation and stuff. So it's always the same two, three, four people. So I don't know if bringing into town uh, didn't really help a whole lot for my, my event last weekend. So well, another thing too, you could go to some outlying communities that might be 20 miles away. Don't want to in, infringe on PAC's uh, yeah. uh, program, but like I said, you might go to DeWitt, um, you I, know, there's Walcott. I, I had the Calamus one and I had about 25 people. Yeah, see Walcott, Calamus, some of the outlying areas that aren't real far away but maybe within 20 miles that's a lot close and then we go to their town and it would still only be about 20 miles for us instead of 30 or 40 to uh out to minky right right. so anyway the october 2nd one was a saint ambrose public night and that was our last uh, one of the 2021 season and then october 9th UCAS had a public night. And yeah, the weather wasn't great for that one either, was it? Uh Uh-uh. In fact, yeah, I think only a few of us from the club showed up. Yeah. It's getting that time of year. The weather's more unpredictable. Yeah. And then this past Saturday, Jeff organized an impromptu uh, get together for International Observe the Moon Night. Yeah, and uh, what happened on that is I did have somebody in this in the city uh, 
anytime I post on the club site or on QC Astronomy, they ask when we're going to bring have something up on the hill. So that kind of spurred me. I thought, I'll just go ahead and I'll bring up a telescope. And then I thought, well, there's a few people, club members that are like close by in town. And I didn't, again, I didn't want to infringe on what PAC had going on. So I didn't even <clears> send it to any of the PAC folks initially. Because like I said, Ellen's got it. Ellen, you do a great job out there. And there's no way in the world I want us to, you know, buck horns with that, especially when it's avoidable. So I only sent it out to like four or five people that uh, usually came to our stuff and that were uh, kind of close by. And then, uh, so we kind of organized it. And then I thought, well, gee, you know, maybe club members are going to get mad at me if I don't, you know, give them the opportunity. And uh, that being a shot in the dark, then that morning, I think I blasted something out to everybody saying, hey, we're doing this if you want to come join. But at any rate, um, I'm still uploading pictures from that. I only had a, a handful of them, but I'm using Bluetooth and they're large for my cell phone, but uh, if they don't come up here pretty quick, um, I got there maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe five o'clock, and uh, I, I made sure that I had the lights turned off. Uh, this was at Bicentennial Park on top of the hill, and, and uh, it's, it's a pretty decent location. There's, it's surrounded by trees, so it's pretty dark for being in town, um, and of course, the moon was going to end that problem anyway. But I, I got there about five-ish and I set up my coffee pot, made sure the lights were off. Um, I brought my little uh, computer speaker and I, I had, uh, had a, uh, the moon presentation and some handouts and stuff on the table. And uh, then uh, Rolando came over with his eight inch SCT. And shortly after that, uh, Travis Hortel, a new member brought his six inch Dob um, I had my 12 inch daub and my 65 millimeter newt, a real little one, so they could see that little scope still do a good job. Um, so I had that set up in the presentation, those scopes. Uh, Cecil showed up a little bit later. And um, we had a number of people show up during daylight when they're riding their bicycles, giving their dogs walks. Uh, most of them, uh, you know, talked about the telescopes, went over, watched the presentation, uh, thought they had tried to be back that night. And uh, we didn't have a whole lot of people at night um, show up. So maybe we had a dozen total throughout the event, but it was fun. I did get a... Uh, uh, an email back from the mayor expressing his gratitude that we did that. Um, and I, I did explain to him before that uh, with me having this observatory, as soon as I get it working here at home, that anytime it's open, I would blast something out to the city and anybody's always welcome to come take a peek. Um, let, let me, uh, it, it finally downloaded these pictures. Make new folder. I sent you a couple of pictures, Jeff. What's that? Oh, I, said I, I said I sent you two pictures. Okay. That I took with my phone. Excellent. Um, I'll try to get them. I'm trying to find Zoom again so I can share my screen. Not a, like I said, I, I uh, don't do a lot of picture uh, taking at events. You guys see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Is it showing? Yep. Mm -hmm. hey, here's my 12 inch daub. And here's that 65 millimeter newt. And I think everybody's here seen both of those scopes. There's stories behind both of them that we don't need to get into. But uh, at any rate, uh, that was what I had set up. Um, and then, uh, of course, I had the little speaker and uh, the moon presentation going. I had it cycling around, so that worked really well. Um, Rolando, of course, brought his 80 inch SCT. So that was pretty nice. Um, he got some really good views of Saturn on there. I was really impressed with them. Um, it's my nine and a quarter. Are you, yeah. Was it a nine and a quarter? Yeah. Okay. And then there's Jason uh, Travis. I don't know whether any of you remember meeting him. Uh, he's a new member. Uh, he actually joined in uh, uh, last month. I, no, I don't recall meeting him. Yeah, and uh, this is that little uh, six inch uh, daub I picked up that in telescope, and it does an incredible job. And uh, uh, Dr. Mitchell, you've got a six. This is the in telescope version of it. So uh, I'm always pleased with that. Um, 
at the end of the night, I, I just held my camera up to uh, the scope and snapped the picture and sent, put that on uh, the Facebook page for Riverdale and told them we were ending it for the night. And then a little bit later on, I, I just, again, I just held the cell, cell phone up and no big deal. Said, uh, you know, it's the moon, Jupiter and Saturn. And uh, I did get comments back on those. And it's, uh, I think, a little bit of regret that more people didn't show uh, that it was, oh, that, that would have been neat type of thing. So, uh, well, you might do a follow up uh, next spring and maybe the word will get out for the people that were there and say, hey, you got to go check this out. Yeah, and I think so too because um, I've had, I've been up there a number of times. It has been a couple of years, but I used to go up there maybe every other month, and uh, I, I get you know a head full of people. Um, what I was hoping to do with this, and if we can do it more, I'd like to hit the city up for a donation uh, to our observatory. Um, but I think that I need to show them that uh, to to do a little bit more out there. I wouldn't be embarrassed to ask them for a grand or two. Uh, if, if we were up there periodically. So, um, but yeah, it, it was a fun event. Well, if you want to dazzle the public right now is a good time because you got Jupiter and you can see the moons. Um, Alan did a great presentation with his video 12 inch mead with Saturn and could uh, wash out Saturn and show the little moons and and everything and uh the moon of course was out it was a little it'd be better if it was quarter phase or less but it was kind of bright and then rusty did a great job when he had m13 see those things that you know you got to have something that really uh excites the public because sometimes when you put something out there that's kind of faint uh, it, it it they they can't relate to it i don't think as they can Saturn, Jupiter, and if we lose Jupiter and Saturn, eventually we got Orion coming up with, and that's a pretty good object to view. You got to have something that razzle dazzles the public to get them excited. Right. We had the uh, was it the sheriff deputy or the deputy there? She she saw the Ring Nebula and Saturn and some of the planets or the two planets. That, that was pretty funny, but yeah, she enjoyed it. Where's the unshare? Am I unshared? No. no. Oh, there it goes. <clears throat> so anyway, see, it was fun. You want to see some pictures from uh, Niabi? From, sure. from, your, then, from your event last Saturday, yes. You yeah. know, while, while you get that set up, um, Ellen, uh, can Rolando, can you show yours from uh, that night? And then at least we'll keep the two uh, sessions uh, together. You want me to do that now? Yeah, why don't you? Because we just talked. It was Is that from tonight or from last Saturday? That was from uh, Saturday. Okay, yeah. So that's it. it it's the same event. So <clears throat> then we're not splitting up the uh, event. Can you see my screen at all? Yes. Yes. Yep. So that was just with my... Uh, my Samsung phone shooting it through the eyepiece. Nice. So that turned out pretty well. And then let's see here. Oh, that kind of Just another picture. Those are the only two I had. Cool. Pretty cool. <clears throat> good, good Terminator in those photos. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that's it for the QCS uh, Observe the Moon Night. So, Ellen, yeah, go for it. Uh, show us some uh, some photos from your night. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So one of the things we always try to do before we really start observing is get a group photo. And I think we had probably 20, 25 visitors in this, in this picture, plus club members. You can probably identify some of the club members that were there. 
Uh, but that's always that's always nice. How, how many scopes did we have set up? We had the PACMO. Rusty, you had yours. Byron had one. Uh, Dale. Uh, Dino. Dino. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Ron I... Mullen. Um, yeah, we had quite a few uh, quite a few telescopes <clears throat> set up. Yeah, I had mine set up. And. Let me go through. I don't have these maybe organized this the best way I could, but uh, here, here's one that is kind of a composite. Uh, that that night, um, IO and Europa had a conjunction, and I, I think we quit around 1030. I think everybody left at 1030, so they might have gotten a little bit closer by then, but people were really amazed that they could actually see the moons actually moving in real time. You know, just watching them on the video screen. That was pretty cool. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what you really need to to really get the public's attention when they when you can point things out that they can relate to. And then uh, the other thing that we do is, uh, you know, try to get pictures that bring the moons out. And uh, I was kind of disappointed we could only find like five moons. Sometimes we've, we've had, you know, seven or eight moons that we could identify, but I think with, with the bright moon we had the other night, that made it kind of hard to see some of those fainter ones. I think I can just about make something out between Rhea and Titan. Or is that a background star? I think it's a background star. You're talking about like great, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. Yes. Yeah, there's something there, but I, I don't think it was a moon. There, there's some moons right up near the rings, and I think the exposure was a little bit too uh, high here to really pull those out. But uh, so it just depends where they're located and the conditions that you have, what, what you can see a lot of times. Um, but yeah, people people are amazed, you know, when you when you can show them stuff like that. Here's uh, here's a, a uh, there's uh, two double doubles. I don't know if you knew, know this. The uh, double double. I got a picture of that from uh, last month. I can show you that if you want to see it. But the double double in uh, Lyra or Lyra, the constellation Lyra, are are much closer together. But these, this is a nice one for uh, public events because the doubles are further apart. This is called poor man's double double. <laughs> Because it's easier to split, <laughs> they're further apart. Uh, that that was kind of neat. And then you can talk about what double stars are. What's uh, what's this one officially called? Um, I'll have to. Uh, it's got like an STF number on it. I can find that out for you if you want. Yeah, I, I can find. I've, I've got it written down. I don't have it here in front of me. I'll, I'll I'll try to remember to get you that number. It's it's actually pretty nice. It's a nice one. It's easy easy to see, and it doesn't take uh, you know just any kind of uh, camera. I think would would do well on that one. Be great. Um, now let's see what else. Oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to show you here that I think is kind of cool. Uh, uh, here's um, here's M2. That was really nice. That was a spectacular one, M2. Mm -hmm. And somebody wanted to see Neptune. And we took oh, a time exposure that. snapshot of that and verified uh, we could see Triton also. Oh, nice. So it was it was pretty uh, pretty good. It didn't take any pictures of the moon, but uh, I think it was a highly successful observing session. I know Rusty uh, had that. I think you had your R two set up, didn't you, Rusty? Yeah, yeah. I was using the R two. So I you know I think the the pandemic has been a blessing for us in in some respects. I mean it's enabled us to uh, do some things. Um, 
we we did have a uh, Cub Scouts outreach session. Uh, this was a small group of us. Uh, just a couple of days before that, and we were looking at the moon there. We didn't use the PACMO for that, but uh, Ann and uh, Jan Gustafson and Ann Bauer did a talk while uh, the, uh, Roy and Wayland and I set up our scopes. There's M13. Oh, this, this is a nice uh, object here too. If you want to talk about carbon stars, you know, uh, massive red stars, super giant stars, this is a really nice one here. This is the Garnet star. That's one of my favorites. And it, it really shows up red on the monitor. <clears throat> and, and this was Neptune that night. And it was a little better conditions. You could actually really see uh, Triton well that night. And you can see it's in a different position too. <laughs> Things are moving out there. Ring Nebula. Anyway, I've got, uh, we, we've had uh, like four observing sessions, public observing sessions in the last month, but I won't bore you with all of them. They're, they're similar. A lot of them are similar. <clears throat> Very nice. Let's see, I need to unshare here somehow. Yep, at the top of the screen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, very nice. Events that are coming up. Well, this Saturday is PAC's annual banquet. Um, his first question is, is it still on as an in-person event? Yes, it's going to be an in-person event. We have uh, 44 people signed up for it. And uh, we are gonna have a uh, guest speaker. If everything works right, we're going to have uh, Dr. Russett McMillan from Apache Point Observatory give a, a talk on laser range uh, finding of the moon using uh, retro reflectors left on the surface of the moon by the Apollo astronauts. Mm -hmm. and the telescope that they have at uh, Apache Point. And uh, we're going to have awards, you know, given out to club members, observing awards, outreach awards, and um, member of the year, plus a top secret award that I won't mention until the meeting. Um, but yes, yeah, so it will be an in-person event. Uh, does... Anybody want to attend that hasn't signed up? Okay, so that's that's good. We're we're happy with the numbers. I I'm not looking for more, but if you said you you wanted to attend, I could probably still get you in. Mm -hmm. All right. And then November, and then QCS's next public night is November 6th. November 6th. Hmm. <clears throat> so, um, November 6th, is that when daylight savings time ends that night? Around that time. Let me double check. Uh, see, does that, uh, uh, November yes. 7th. yes, it does. Yeah. November, yeah. November 7th. Well, very, very early morning, very early morning of November 7th. Yeah. 2 yes. yeah. Why 2 a.m.? Does anybody, I mean, what made them decide 2 a.m. exactly? Different time. <laughs> Most everybody is sleeping. <laughs> so that, that way it doesn't impact any work schedules as much. 
Except for I don't know, it may have something to do with the bars closing at that time. Yeah. Hmm. Do you so think they? Do you think they? Do you think they? Be, everybody for an hour. You think they'd be in favor of it ending early that night so that people could re relive their last hour at the bar <laughs> or yeah. something? Anyway, okay. That's. And so far, all right. And uh, all right, anybody bought any new gear lately or have any gear for sale? I got my um, APM binoculars finally came in <laughs> after waiting probably. They're obsolete I now. How many, I don't know how many months I waited for them. They show up in uh, beginning of October. I think I ordered them like in February. So I saw the boat they were on on the news. <laughs> oh no! Well, that was if that, if that were a if that were a computer, they would have already replaced the operating system by now. <laughs> Let me show them to you to see if they're big enough. Wow, they're big. <laughs> what do you think? Are you, are, you gonna, are you gonna have to start lifting weights before you can use them? <sighs> oh, they weigh nine pounds actually. Yeah. What size are they? These are uh, twenty-five by a hundred. Wow. Jeez, it's bigger than mine. Yeah, that's the same size as the Orion ones I got, Sam. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. uh, Too heavy to hold. I have something to sell. <clears throat> I acquired it here a little while back. Um, couldn't even get them at the time, and it ended up showing up. And I have a brand new Celestron Edge 8 inch optical tube assembly with the dovetail, no mount, just the telescope. It uh, is $1,400, and since it's brand new, all I did was open the box. I haven't even taken anything out of the box. Just opened up to make sure everything was there. <clears throat> and uh, right now, just starting out, I would sell it for $1,300. It'd save you 100 bucks, <laughs> but it's brand new. Uh, Eight-inch edge OTA with the dovetail. Brand new? Why are you selling it? Because I think I'm might either go to uh, 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 Newtonian or I think I would have rather got the nine and a quarter inch. I got an 11 inch um, carbon fiber tube, but it's getting so heavy for me that, and also um, to put it on an AVX, it's pushing the limits, but a nine and a quarter inch would allow me to put a DSLR on it and not stress the mount. And um, yeah, it's gonna be more money, but that's that's what I'm thinking. Either a newt or a nine and a quarter, something like that. And what do you have, well, which one is it that you're selling the 11, you said? No, the eight inch. Uh, I might oh, sell the 11 too eventually, but um, I got a brand new in the box. I just opened it up to make sure it was there. Brand new Edge Celestron HD eight inch optical tube with the dovetail. It's got the finder scope on it. And I don't know if you look on the uh, website Celestron, it shows all the accessories that come with yeah. it. But it, it's brand new. I, I, I don't even think I even touched the thing in the box. Why would you go with a newt instead of that? That's a perfect yeah. scope for even that that AVX mount, even. Yeah, I know, but I I I like Byron's setup, and I'm like his astrophotography with the newt, the seven or eight inch that he has. Um, and I'm again, I'm not sure what I want to do, but the nine and a quarter I could also handle easier, and uh, well, not as easy as the eight inch, but it would give me a little more power. And I think it's a good match for the AVX mount also. As I'm getting older, I just, I had that uh, Skywatcher 
uh, EQ6R, and it's a brute, just like the Celestron C gem would be. And I really like that AVX. It's really easy to handle. And uh, but the, the 11 inch is, I mean, all you can do with the 11 inch without going over the specifications is just for viewing. Uh, I mean, you start putting a camera on there and a guider and dew heater and everything, you're going to be stressing that uh, the gears may be in the mount. So, so like I said, you know of anybody or whatever, I'm just going to uh, mention it tonight here to the club. But um, uh, in the future, I will get more aggressive and maybe try to put it on Facebook Marketplace, um, Craigslist, or even Cloudy Nights. But uh, this is the first I've announced it. So $100 off. It's brand new. Like quite a scope. Well, no. I think uh, Jeff had an eleven-inch edge, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, I still got it. I love it. I like that you can hyperstar it and go from F eleven to F two. Yeah, well, that's why I don't really want to take and sell the eleven-inch because I got an eleven-inch hyperstar for that too. And sometime, if it works out. I'd like to bring it over to PAX 11 inch and put it on that and hook a DSLR up to it and see what we get. Because I've never even taken a picture through that Hyperstar. It's brand new too. And I've had it for two or three years. I've had it, I've had it hooked up to my 11 inch just to do a dry run and uh, it's, it's pretty easy to do, but you want to be real careful of the glass plate in front because if you get aggressive with it or, you know, trip over a cord with the camera hooked up to it, you could break that uh, glass cover in the front. So anybody wants to get into astronomy, any friends you know or whatever, that would be a great starter scope, that eight inch. So that's all I have. Any other new, any other new gear or gear for sale? Well, I ordered for Wilton and if they don't like it, I'm keeping it another Rigel Systems electronic focuser. They've got a new model out that's super, super exacting. And uh, I think that should be in next week. And uh, he bought two Sestos, uh, the Prima Lucci lab, and they're real expensive electronic focusers, but he didn't really do his research on them because they're not really well suited for an SCT at all. They don't work well. So uh, we're gonna probably sell one of those if anybody wants one for a refractor. Uh, or any uh, a Crayford uh, focuser that would work fine. Uh, they're pretty expensive. They're nice. Uh, I can talk him into getting rid of them pretty cheap, or one of them. Uh, he's got a, a refractor and he's got a solar scope that we can put the other one on. So we'll keep one and put the Rigel system on the other. And um, if for some reason he doesn't care for the Rigel, then I'm just going to keep it for my setup because uh, it's the same bracket and gearing uh, for his mead as it is for my Celestron because we both have feather touch focusers. So that's pretty cool that uh, it's that versatile. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Just uh, for the heck of it. I think you can see that that's basically what it looks like. I think everybody knows what an edge eight inch looks like. Mm -hmm. so. so basically our 14 inch edge only smaller. Right. Yep. yep. That's it. <sighs> right. Anyone else?
We still need ideas for presentations for these meetings. Anybody has an, has an idea for one or know someone who has an idea for one, please let, let the board know. Remember, Mike, we don't want anchovies. <clears throat> All right. Looks like we're up to the treasurer's report. Sam? Okay, so not much has changed since the last month. Uh, the general fund still at the... Well, it's gone down a little bit. A couple of payments went out for electricals uh, at Jens went. So general fund is at um, 2103.73. The event funds are at 327.30. And the observatory relocation is at 41.591. Seventy-six or seventy-eight, I think. I am seventy-eight. Getting pretty old. Anyway, for a total of uh, forty-four, all twenty-two eighty-one. All right. Well, hopefully, we won't have to make. Too many more payments for Sherman Park. Yep. So, do I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So moved. Any seconds? Second. All those in favor of accepting? Aye. 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 So moved. Which brings us to observatory relocation and what one thing you mentioned about, yeah, you know, meant talk about not having to make too many more payments to Sherman Park. Let's see who sent out that email. Uh, was it? Was it? I'm trying to find it. Which one was it? I get so many emails these days. Uh, Jim, one of the emails you sent out today, actually, just about an hour. Not too long ago, you uh, were proposing a work day at Sherman Park uh, sometime this weekend to uh, move to move everything we can out of the Sherman out of the roll off building in the blockhouse. Yeah, right? why, don't, why, don't, why don't I just read the uh, email that I sent to the board and then Mike can add anything that he'd like to. Uh, I said Mike okay. and I had a productive day Saturday. We measured the existing dome building, concrete slab, and finalized the size uh, of the concrete for the future dome building. We decided the circular portion should have a radius of six feet, one half inch, so just slightly more than 12 inches, 12 feet is what we want the circular portion of the, the end of the building to be. And then the overall length would be 20 feet. We had been talking about a concrete slab that was 12 feet by 16 feet in length. Uh, but after we laid it out on the field, we decided it really would be better to make the concrete slab a little longer. That way, what, you know, at, we're gonna set the existing circular dome building on this concrete slab, attach it. But in the future, our proposal uh, from the board has been to put a, uh, an add-on to the north that would um, give us a little bit extra room in that building. And when we looked at it, we said, you know, an additional four feet may not be enough. Let's make that slab a little bit longer. Let's make it a total of 20 feet long. And then when, when it comes time to put that bump out on, it gives us the flexibility to add, um, you know, as, as much as eight foot addition onto that building, you don't have to build it that big. And um, we, we did put orange stakes that would mark the location 
Mike took some photographs. He's gonna send that to the contractor. We just wanna let the contractor know we're really ready to go. Whenever he, whenever he got the labor and the time, we're, we're ready for him and he can move in and, and get that work done because we really like to get that done as soon as we can this year so that then we can have club members move the dome uh, to that location. And then I said, while we were at Sherman Park, we talked to the resident ranger. Um, we told him about our plans and he told us whatever of the building that we would want. For example, they're not gonna make use of the, the building with the roof rolled off. So if we wanna take the wheels or the metal rail for use on our new building, you know, he's fine with us doing that. Um, as a matter of fact, he said, you know, they would prefer to have those four by four posts that support the rail system and the roof when it's rolled off. They'd, they'd, they'd prefer that we take that away. Um, he did also say that he would want a documentation that just shows that it turns over ownership to Clinton County and it'd be for our benefit too, to be able to just say, we, you know, we're no longer have any responsibility for that. Um, we did ask him if he thought it'd be possible for them to provide a tractor or backhoe to help us lower the dome since they had um, provided that when we lifted the dome up in place. And he said they would try to do that. Um, that equipment is located uh, nor north of there in their shops, maybe five or 10 miles away. So he said, if we could give them a couple of weeks notice, um, it, it would increase the likelihood of them being able to do that. And so then that leads to what Robert was talking about is, you know, as, you know, as progressing along is to be able to turn those buildings over to Clinton County, we're gonna wanna clean out the roll off building and the block building. And I would propose it's, we're out of the hot of the summer, and we're not into the cold of the winter yet. So what about this weekend? I've asked a few of the club members if either Saturday or Sunday would work. And I'll ask the people attending this meeting too, if either of those days would work so that we could uh, get everything out of those two buildings, either haul them to the landfill. I know there's some stuffed chairs and things that the rats, have, or not the rats, the mice have taken up home in. And, anybody want them, we'd certainly donate them, but otherwise I think we uh, you know. all those to the landfill and anything that's of value, we would take over to Mankey. And so I know that Howard Cox and Steve Van Hefty had, have said they were available this coming Sunday, but not Saturday. John Baker had said that the Cat's Eye Distillery has a large truck that could be used to haul some of that stuff over to Minky and to the, the landfill. So I just kind of open that up if anybody's able to come this weekend does either Saturday or maybe Sunday. Sounds like it's preferable right now with more people being available. Mm. Yeah, so I was just about to ask. So the, the PAC banquet starts at 5.30 on <clears throat> Saturday. So the question, yeah. what, what time of the day were you thinking of going out? Well, I, I would think earlier, like you say, if we did it Saturday, certainly getting a, an early start and uh, some of the landfills are close about noon. So that would be another reason to try to get going earlier if it was done on Saturday. If we did it on Sunday, we'd have to see if John would could allow some of that stuff to stay in his, his yeah the following day and I don't think John's attending the meeting right now but I could check with yeah. is there a good place over at Mankey to store all the stuff or is it just in the classroom are you thinking or in the roll off or well I was thinking somewhere between the roll off and Mankey either one of them there's not a lot of room but we just need to get it out of there. If there were any members that were willing to, uh, yeah. that their houses would be another option. 
Yeah, I don't know about the roll-off building. Remember what happened when we stored Wayne's magazines and books in there? In came well, the rack. I, 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 Mike and I already brought what we could fit in my van uh, to the roll-off. So the club's 10-inch daub we put in there. There's a, looks like a Celestron tripod and a few other things that we've kind of crammed in there, but. What else was I gonna add? Whatever, whatever ideas people have on where we could put that stuff, but we really need to get it out of Sherman within the next month or so if we wanna be able to turn it, turn it over to them and turn the electricity off. Uh, another question, going back to the dome building, how soon do you think, how soon after putting up the dome, do you think we could start work on the addition? Well, I, I think probably as quickly as we can get mobilized. I mean, you know, maybe letting the concrete cure for a week or so, uh, I think would be adequate to be able to start setting the, the walls and the dome on it. Hey, Jim, I, Jim. Yes, Howard. I, uh, have you thought about any lags that need to be in that cement for the square part or the round part when they pour? It? We've already discussed that. And my conclusion with the holes that are already in the bottom plate is that I got a hammer drill, a good Milwaukee half inch uh, hammer drill, and put some lead slugs in or expandable bolts that are you know i think they're probably five eighths or whatever they are uh into the concrete and if it's fairly new concrete it won't be cured like super rock hard and uh it'd be easier to do that than to put l lag bolts in and it'd be it'd be impossible to try to line those holes up and also is uh any of the electrical is that above in the wood structure not in the cement, correct? Yeah, it comes in uh, on the north side now or uh, the northeast corner of the round uh, walls. And uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to get it so we can go underground and mm -hmm. maybe with a PVC pipe come right in inside the wall and then we can just reattach to the way the uh, electrical is now in the building. Okay, that sounds good. Already thinking about all that. Yeah, and anything for the square structure, you bring it in from the other. Uh, yeah, we could do that, or we could, uh, you know, I, I hadn't thought that far yet. Yeah, well, just wanted to ask ahead of time. Yeah. So does the slab have to be maybe 13 foot wide instead of 12, one? Then you're going to run into problems when you set that dome down. You're going to, we're going to have to trim anyway where it goes around on the slab because uh, it's going to interfere with the uh, uh, siding because the uh, siding sticks a little below. Oh, does it? Yeah. Yeah. The only reason I was wondering is, um, and I agree with you totally on using those AJs, the lead plugs for that and drilling it down. But if it's that close to the edge on three sides, is there a chance of it, you know, breaking the, the concrete slab because it's only, you know, an inch away from the edge or so? That's why I was wondering if it should be. Well, those bolts uh, that come through the bottom plate of the round walls, that's probably in about three inches or so, I would think. And we could keep away from the very, very edge one. We don't have to put it like right at the edge of the, right. the square. It can be off, you know, even six inches either way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Drill new holes in the plates too and move them okay. more inner side. But you want to bolt that sucker down in case there's a strong wind that comes across there. Yeah. It's funny. Mine is just sitting on the ground. It's protected by the hill in the house, but it hasn't budged an inch and it's been there, you know, two years through the derecho and hasn't, you know, it's not, it's just sitting on the ground. Now, another thing we got to think about too, and Jim and I discussed this, we figure the doorway into the dome will be somewhere located to the south or to the west. And um, we got to kind of figure 
how we're gonna turn that in there and make everything line up. And I'm thinking of the electrical with it supplying to where the box is inside. I mean, you think it's easy, but there's lots of little things to kind of think. And, you know, you could rewire it, but I'm trying to make it, you know, as easy as possible. Jim and I thought about a lot of that stuff Saturday. And I guess the wall, the door doesn't have to be perfectly north, south, east, or west. It can be southwest. Right, right. And that's where it might be. Yeah. I kind of like things aiming a little bit toward the, the Mickey classroom. So you can kind of look out the window and see, you know, if people are coming or going or whatever. I don't know whether right. it matters or not. But. Yeah. That's where we were thinking, south to west, somewhere in that quadrant. And after the dome is erected, how soon do you think we could start thinking about or start working on the extension to it that we're talking about? Well, I would say, you know, if you have a mild winter, we could, you know, get ideas going for that. It's just that there you go. You got some more money being allocated, uh, taken away from the roll-off project. Um, I think what you're thinking about Dr. Mitchell, as you're running out of room, storage room for all the crap we're bringing over from Sherman Park. But as Jim and I was talking, if you really look at a lot of stuff that we've brought over, I think a lot of it, and I, I don't really want to classify it as junk or it's outdated, but I think there's a lot of sorting that could be done and we could condense and get rid of some of that stuff because I just don't think some of it's outdated. It's just not functionable anymore. I mean, that's my idea. If it was me, I'd clean house. Uh, actually, actually, what I was thinking was that I was reviewing the acceptance letter for the Riverboat Grant that this dome is part of. And it says that the project has to be in progress within 12 months of receiving the money. Uh -huh. And that would be like the beginning of May of next year. So yeah, I'd like us to have as much right completed for the dome building as we can yeah. by then. Well, we just got to think of the height. And Jim and I talked about that also about a, we got to have a little pitch so you get water off the top, but yes. you know, maybe a 212 pitch. So every foot, it only rises two foot two inches. Um, so, you know, you don't want to go a 412, otherwise you're going to bring the sides down, you'd be hitting your head for sure walking in. Uh, and we want to, and we got to have clearance. So when we look, swing the dome around to the north, that we're not looking into the roof too. So, uh, you know. You, you, you really don't need a door into the little lean-to structure. Uh, well, the only thing is you're going to um, have Right, where are you going to enter into it from outside or inside the dome from the dome yeah i, I was thinking having a, a door going right into the dome or actually that door could face toward the the uh, structure to keep it sealed and have one door then on the yeah. but I'm, I'm just thinking if you've got four walls in there that you can kind of put a table up against their shelves or whatever the more doorways you have the worse off you are yeah i yes. was this is hard. I was wondering if that door that's on the round dome could be torn towards the, the rectangular structure and then you have another door so you don't even have to get any snow or anything in there. Yeah, yeah. the only... Go ahead. Um, the thing is, that's a steel door. I think going into the dome, I think we should keep that as it, and we cut a new opening because you got door size, Right. To the height of the oh. structure, right? To do okay. it, it's easier just to cut it. Well, man, we may, so we may need to do yeah. do something custom with that. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I just open up another opening in the in the dome to go into the square part. It, it might be that all sealed for the structure. It might be best to keep it at 180 degrees to the the outer door on the dome into the so it it's uh, straight across from the other door. The, the 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 new the new door being so big so you want the existing door so that 
So if I'm reading this correctly, we have the existing door on the dome facing south. Yeah. Got a new structure exactly 180 degrees from it inside the dome to go into the extension. Yeah, and then you don't need another door other than an escape window or something in that structure for escape or whatever. I, I'm not even uh, sure we really need that because we don't have it in the classroom. Well, we do in the classroom, but we don't in the big dome. It would it would also depend how the structural supports and the electricity is laid up inside the is laid out inside the yeah. dome right now. Okay. Just want to mention it. Yeah. Then you guys can make the decision. It's a good idea if we if we can do it. Yeah. All right. So. Um. We still mm -hmm. don't have a definite uh, date from Dan about when they can, when he they can come and lay the cement. Well, I sent a text message to him yesterday, and I have not heard a word back. But I'm not going to call him like today or tomorrow, but. I will be calling him by next weekend to confirm that he did get that text because uh, the flagging of the uh, layout for the foundation was done uh, not only so we know where we're going with it, but to also give him a signal that, hey, we're, we're, we're rolling here. We're ready to go. Yes, speaking of which, I haven't gotten around to emailing Scott Horde. I did. I still haven't heard back from him. I did two weeks ago good and I asked him if he was still in business. Yeah, good luck with Got the that. thing from yeah. Well, so, I said I, I said I could try, see if maybe has me. I'm trying to think what what exactly do I ask him? I mean if he's interested in building our roll-off and right. that we're ready that the, we're soon ready to go and we don't want to pour the concrete until we get a contractor. But, but speaking on that, do we, uh, this uh, Wapsie River, do, or, uh, do they, do we have to take the old track and rollers off the old roll off? Or can we just leave it? Well, we can leave it. Uh, yeah. okay, um, one, one, uh, one, the, I think the main thing is just whether we see that as a financial advantage to us, what it's going to cost us to buy those components. And then I think a secondary thing was um, since they don't want some of the things remaining, they're not even sure if they're going to demolish the entire building, uh, wh whether we, you know, help them out by removing a portion of it. Yeah, the, the, the rollers and the track, that's, I, I think that's unusable because trying to match the same stuff up for a new structure with the older stuff, plus then you're mixing old worn out bearings on rollers with new. So the new's gonna wear out a lot quicker because they're gonna be stressed differently. I just think it's a lot of work yeah. pulling that stuff off to try to reuse it because you know it's half the size of the building. So we're gonna need you know twice that anyway. So where are you gonna put the old to tie into the new? Hey, hey Jim, it, no. it might be best just to leave it there because it actually is what ties the other roof together with the with the levers go around the frame or around the track. So it might be best for them just to cut that and then remove the outside poles and beams. Uh, and let's just go all new on the new one. If we have plenty of money, we can just buy all new. I, I don't think that stuff, I have a uh, place where I have stuff welding the rails made. It might be best to just leave it there and have them uh, had the other stuff removed and it's just locked into place. Well, it's two inch angle iron is what they're using for the track. And then they weld tabs on and bolt it to the top plate. Uh, that that's what they're using for the rail is just laid over uh, the, the two inch. And, um, uh, Jim and I looked at it and, uh, it can be, it can be all be salvaged. Okay. And we got even the name of the, hardware company it's stamped on the side but it's going to take some doing <clears throat> to uh support the roof while you get that stuff yeah. out and everything else well and the, how about the rollers though i that was my main concern is the rollers because they have bearings in them and you know they wear out we've got that problem over at Mankey's uh the dome where bearings and stuff are wearing out and we should replace it all 
I, I think these bearings and stuff can be bought through Allied or McMaster car. They're just a simple industrial type of roller with bear, grease bearing in it. So I don't think it'd be v, anything. There's a V groove in those uh, rollers. It's just not a flat wheel. There's a, Yeah, I understand that. Uh, I, I used to purchase stuff at, at uh, where I worked, and uh, there, it's just a simple V, yeah. a steel That's, tire with a groove in it. Yeah, that'd be That'd be good if we can get them. Should be able to. Yeah. If we can get, can we get replacement bearings for the existing dome, as Jeff says, they're kind of. Well, I suggested on the Minky Dome that we put those new garage door nylon rollers in there because it would make it quieter and smoother running, but. I proposed that two or three years ago, and we never got any headway on it. Uh, we I think, my, honestly, I think we kind of forgot about it with other things happening. Yeah, and I'm not holding my breath on Scott, but Scott's program already included all that stuff in there because <laughs> it was basically a kit. I really did like Scott's blueprints. I, I like the roof line <clears throat> and everything. Uh, I, I thought the plan was a, was a very good plan. Yeah, but <laughs> nobody yeah. to do it. <laughs> but like I said, maybe this Robert guy I know will take it on when it comes to that point. And I'll talk to Dan more about that. Good. I'll take him over to Sherman Park and show him how it looks, but it's all in the blueprint, all how it's how it's to go together. If we found somebody local to build it, it should be a lot cheaper to have all new than getting Scott, who had to travel quite a distance. Yeah, I forgot where he was coming out of, but it's not like you know local. Yeah. Well, I have a possible connection. I'm not going to say speaking for him, but I would definitely talk to this guy. Steve, hi. You're muted. There we go. Yeah, it's been a busy day over here. I got, I've, I've done a dozen things and uh, looks like this is number 13. So you look, you look all in. Yeah, I'm all out right now. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So I'm just seeing what you guys are doing. That's all. We'll, we'll try not to drag it out too long. <laughs> right, right, right. Now we're up to the just talking about progress in the observatory. Yeah. Um, bit bit of progress I can offer. I finally got in touch. I, I met with Margaret Babbitt, who's uh, with the advancement office at St. Ambrose, and she said she could look into uh, some possible grant opportunities from us, uh, and. She wanted me to send her copies of the grant applications we've already sent so she get a better idea of exactly what we're trying to do and and uh, perhaps better able to pick out grant opportunities that might be more inclined to uh, give us money. I've uh, yet to hear back from her about that part, but as soon as she does, I'll flash out a message to the board and see where we go from there. She mentioned uh, she mentioned Arconic might be a, a place to try. What else? Um, Arconic, uh, ah, Mid American. Apparently, there's some. Uh, St. Ambrose graduates in the administration chain at Mid American. Maybe they could be. Uh... I've been. I've worked on their programs all the time. They won't donate money directly. That's why they've got that Global Days of Service that I'm working in right now, huh. and that's how I got the last two grants from them. And uh, this, I should be able to get one thousand more for this one. I've got another thing lined up for another thousand. So. She did mention that some of them supported the construction of McMullen Hall. Maybe, maybe uh, 
we could find some contact some of them directly maybe they could help us out with this what'd you call it again jeff it's called global days of service global days of service in other words what happens is is an employee donates x amount of time and for, for the amount of time that uh, you've donated to support a uh, nonprofit organization, they donate uh, so much per hour that you put in. So if you've got some students that did some work, like on McMullen, they would match some funds to donate toward that project. Okay, something to think about. Um, the, the way she sounded it, if we were to do these grants under St. Ambrose's name, they'd need cabinet approval. So it sounds like it would be a lot less hassle if QCAS looks, goes for these grants directly. Or at least if QCAS is the name on the grant. All right. Um, has anybody heard anything else about other possible grant sources? I'll take that as a no. All right, does anything else, anyone wants to talk about the observatory? How much money we got now? 40 grand, 30 grand. Uh, Treasurer's report in the observatory fund itself, $41,591.78. We're thinking we need another 15 to 20,000 to be able to build the roll off building. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like, are they going to like, are we going to try to like build a dome building first? We, we are going to build the dome building first. Yes. Okay. All right. We're waiting on the concrete guy. We're ready to go. Okay. Else. I'm going to tie off of that with some Walton Observatory stuff, if that's okay. Is that Go okay? Ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I've been working on, of course, the Walton Observatory project. And what's happening with that is uh, for me doing this work, they're going to donate $1,000 to QCAS for the observatory. Uh, so I've got that $1,000 coming in. But also I've been documenting this work and for this Global Days of Service at Mid-American Energy, when I turn in those, these this amount of hours will call, qualify us for another thousand. So here, by the end of the year, this project will be done and I'll have that both turned in. So we should have two grand coming in on that. Additionally, the, the way I developed this is um, this project, uh, as far as Mid-American Energy is concerned, is, is doing the setup and uh, the installation of all the gear um, now I'm opening up another Global Days of Service project for writing up all the documentation and training the trainers on this. So there'll be another 100 hours I can turn into Mid-American Energy on the same project. So hopefully I'll get another 1,000 out of it. So uh, out of this Wilton uh, Observatory project, I'm hoping to get three grand donated. So what I'm running into trouble with right now is, and really this is the last big did someone ask something? No, I think it's. I think we're getting feedback. Okay. At any rate, uh, what I'm running into trouble with now is, uh, and the, this is the only thing I've got to resolve. Uh, and the, this is the only thing I've got to resolve. It is. Echoing back. Let me see if I can do something about that. I'll turn off my speaker. Turn it down. So at any rate, the, what the problem I have right now, the only problem I have to resolve is how to get this control box. How to get this control. Box to raise and lower the dome. And uh, it's this jack right here. Uh, 
I worked with uh, Pure Tech for quite a while trying to figure out what it is, and we thought it was just the cable. But when you enable the peer to go up and down, it doesn't do anything at all. Uh, this is the cord that goes to that control box. So we pulled that out, and they gave us three different wiring diagrams to try to make it work and no luck so uh, this is what plugs into the control panel so we've it's an eight pin din and we've tried different combinations of wires and it's just not working and they don't know what to say about it so i've been working with pure tech on that and they're a pretty rude company to deal with they're not very helpful um last week when i was out there at 10 minutes to five he says well i'm going to go home for the day i'll catch you later and he just disconnected and that was it so yeah exactly so uh, they weren't very helpful there, but but that that's the main problem. When I get that done, all the gear is set up, configured, and is automatable. Uh, the next thing I got to do is just uh, go out there at night and uh, do the alignment stuff, and then I'm done. Um, so, you know, uh, if the pier would go up and down, I've got maybe eight hours to work and the project's done. I'll have about 120, 130 hours in it, and then I can start writing documentation and training for that third thousand dollars so uh i'll be looking forward to getting that all wrapped up um grant uh, harkness is in jordan right now and uh doing some stuff in afghanistan so basically i'm kind of in charge of this thing but i did get a chance to talk to him on the phone before he left and i said that we ought to put together a uh grand opening star party out there uh, they've got a huge open area of ground uh, just I think east of there and it's flat and it's drivable so uh, I don't know whether I'll be ready in November or not but if we are uh, I'd like to see if we can get the club out there with a bunch of scopes and maybe we can get Cecil Sturdy inch out there because uh, I get the feeling that knowing the way Grant operates he's pretty big show um, I'm thinking we might be able to get some TV and radio out there so it'll be pretty cool so anyway, that's about all I've got on that. If anybody's got any questions. Anybody? Anything else? Hey, I want to ask Jeff about this peer. Or is it a special training thing you're doing to help with the community out with the some type of peer adjustment or something like that, some type, something that helps the club? No, no. What this is, is Wilton's school system uh, ended up getting like a half a million dollars donated and they built a fully automatic, uh, automated um, world-class uh, observatory. And they got all the stuff and put it up and had no idea how to work it. Okay, okay thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? I would like to uh, mention that maybe we could get some pictures taken of the old uh, roll-off dome at Sherman Park so we know how that was put together before we leave it. Is that right? Somebody ever have photos and everything of the rollers? <sighs> Jim and I have taken a lot of pictures of that stuff already. Okay, just wanted to ask. Thanks. Is Dana still a key? Uh... Yeah. Dana Taylor. Yeah, is he yeah. still key in doing the moving? Thanks. That's what I've heard. Jim and Mike. Yeah, that'd be great if we have people do whatever he wants us to do because he was ahead of it the last time, I, from what I understand. And uh, if he wants to take control, we'll do it against him. Mike, you're breaking up. Yeah, Dana and huh. Jim told us, let us know when the concrete is done. Cool. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No. 
All we right. need weather on our side. I guess the farm report said that uh, that uh, the weather for November is supposed to be cooperative. Farm weather last Saturday morning at six o'clock, but uh, uh, somebody told me that they heard that it's supposed to be somewhat decent in November. So let's, let's hope so. Okay. All right, time to start thinking about 2022 elections. elections. Now I'm getting feedback. All right, so positions for president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Um, I'm, I'm willing to put myself up for another year as president, unless someone else thinks they can do a better job. Anybody want to nominate somebody or nominate themselves? I think uh, the, um, the rule should be changed to make the president position lifetime. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> no, yeah. absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Alan, Alan will yeah. testify to that too. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have Alan as a full time uh, president. <laughs> King of Kings and president for life. Yeah, no, thank yeah. you. No, thank you. That's what you get when you do such a good job. I'm glad one of us thinks so. <laughs> All right. Um, Sam, you've only been treasure you've only been treasurer for one year so far, right? Uh, I'm thinking longer than that, but I can't remember exactly. I can't either. I think I'm going on I think I'm going on two. Um, maybe I, I can't remember. If you can't remember, that's probably been more than one. <laughs> and then well, I tell you what, I got elected. I got elected the last time that we have a banquet. When was that? That would have been two years ago. Yep. Okay. Well, and what about vice president and secretary? Our, se our vice president has moved out of state and our, our secretary has been AWOL for months. Um, do we need a nominate, do we need a nomination committee for this? Refresh my memory. We should have. And I thought, uh, I forgot who said a couple of times ago that they would do that, but I don't remember seeing an email go out. I haven't seen any emails. I can check. Nation. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, elections for QCS board. Um, uh, I got an email from Paul Avec. He's he's available to help when needed with publicity. That's all he said. Other than he doesn't want to end up being he doesn't want to be secretary for both clubs at the same time. Um, wait a minute. That looks about it. I, I, I don't see anything else. So, yeah, is anyone interested in gathering nominations for QCS elections? Or should I send out a general email asking for help with that?
General email first, maybe. Don't we vote next month on the 15th? Yeah. Yes. So I'm thinking we only have two weeks to get a slate together and mailed out. And are we going to vote at that meeting? There's only like a dozen people that are going to be there. Yeah, if it's that few, I'm thinking we better handle this vote, the vote by email as well. It's, of course, I won't. Of course, that'll prevent it being anonymous, won't it? Not if there's a, a person that's doing a committee kind of a thing. And I don't know whether anybody really cares if it's anonymous or not. Hmm. Well, okay, I can send out a I can send out an email asking for nominations and committee volunteers. That's, that's pretty much as much as I can do. Um Ooh. Oh. Um, so what, what else do we need to discuss about elections? Yeah, I'm not seeing an email in here either. Jeff, I found Alberio. Yay. <laughs> Very nice. Um, okay, so I'll I'll do my part with this and I'll keep the board, I'll keep the board in the loop as to all right. Uh, next on the agenda, the banquet, next month's banquet. Um, I got the e I got your email, Jeff. So the choices right now are between Golden Corral and the Dynasty Buffet. Yeah, and, and uh, the people that uh, said that they were interested in going, I sent them the email asking for replies. And so far, only Mike uh, and uh, Jim responded back to the email. Mm-hmm. So you need to reply to yours. And I think, uh, Sam, where are you going? Yeah. I yeah, think you I said need, yes. You need to reply no, back to your... I haven't said the plays either, but uh, I'll, I, I can go I either. I said the plays either, but I'll, 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 I'll. You can't go? No, I, I can go to either one of the two. I, I don't care which one. Yeah, you still need to send me something. I mean, if I get nobody that says anything because they don't care, then, then I'm stuck making it, and I don't want to do that. I'll, uh... And where's Rusty at? I didn't get anything back from Rusty. Is Cecil still on the line? I didn't get anything back from Rusty. Is Cecil still on the line? Yeah, either one of them is good for me, Jeff. Yeah, you need to reply to me. Like I said, okay. you know. I can do that. It's really difficult when you... Dynasty. Questions get asked and like nobody answers. It's kind of like at meetings when you say, "What kind of uh, programs do you want?" or "Who do you want to nominate?" And it's it's dead air. It's like you know, <laughs> dead air. It's like you know. So the reason I want to know that is the people that responded that they were, were interested in going, I want you guys to make the decision where, and I'm going to blast out one last thing to the, to the club. And uh, I'll take reservations from that because uh, I need to tell both places how many people we're going to have and when. So that being said, we'll make that decision, then it's done. And uh, 
if they didn't reply and want to come, that's kind of tough beans. Do I reply just to you or to everybody? It doesn't matter, whatever you like. It's not a secret ballot or anything. Everybody, I obviously did. I guess Rusty did and Sam, I'm sure. Either said Golden Corral or Dynasty. Right. Well, I just got a rusty one. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't know if anybody else in this group that didn't reply back wants to go, but it, it's going to be that straightforward. It's it's we're no presentations. Uh, I'm not doing like we did it uh, in the past ones uh, with uh, bingo and trivia and awards and speakers and all that kind of stuff. We'll just keep this in a, a straight, simple dinner because there's only going to be a handful of us. So anyway, I think that's all I've got on that. The uh, Golden Krill, I think, was 13 and a half bucks for an adult, and uh, Dynasty was 14 and a half. Mm. And uh, when I talked to uh, Golden Krill, it sounds like they did kind of have a side room that we could reserve. So if we decide on there, I'll get that. A Dynasty, we've been there the a uh, few times and they got the back rooms that we can get. So we can still have something private and talk and do our thing. So I, I've never been to Golden Corral. What's that like? It too is a buffet, of course. And uh, you, you, you come in the front door, uh, you pay up front. Uh, you go in, grab a tray, and go around and get what you want. The food's pretty fair. They've got a lot of meat choices. And then I think uh, to the left of the main door, I think, is where they've got like a little, uh, uh, some meeting rooms or, you know, little closed off rooms that they can reserve. It's a little bit more cafeteria style than what uh, Dynasty is. Dynasty seems a little bit more intimate because of the lighting. And Golden Trail is a little bit more open. Mm. Uh, as, I, as I just said in the email, I, I can go either way. <laughs> That's what basically most everybody's saying. That's what basically most everybody's saying. Yeah. All right. So. Give that a few more days and see a few more days. See what we end up with. I've got Sam and Robert, so. All right. All right. And as you say, just no frills. Right. Bank with this time. Just get together, eat, and talk. Yeah, and I don't mind if we want to do something. Um, you know, but uh, I'm not planning on a lot myself, you know. Yep. No, no awards this year. So maybe the only thing that happens there is elections if we want to do it that way. Yeah, well, I mean, if we're only going to have like 10 or 12, 10 or 12 people show up at the most, I mean... We can't just rely on that for voting. Yeah, the, the last two banquets, we had close to 50 both times. I think we had like 38 the first time, and I think we had 44 the second time. Which is just about our entire our yeah. entire active membership. Yeah, most of them were there plus, you know, a spouse. Yes. So now we're going to have to do, probably end up doing... We'll have to do something different with the elections this time around. We'll have to do something different with the elections this time around. We can we can finalize the details of that at our next board meeting, which is November November. No, no, I I, I want to get it done this week. Oh, the, on how to do the elections, yes, but where we're going to have it. And, and how many people I want to do right away. And how many people I want to do 
how how soon will we need to have uh, a slate of candidates? I think the bylaws say that they have to have it two weeks before election. Two we can double check the bylaws. It's it's pretty specific on that stuff. But of course, under COVID conditions, um, I imagine there's a little bit of flexibility on how we do things. We've had to been flexible with everything since COVID. Well, everything. The archaeology club always has 50 or 60 people show up, or at least in the 40s anyway. And their first meeting since COVID is this month. Hmm. Of any sort, no Zoom meetings, no in-person meetings, no nothing, and very few email. And very few email. It depends on how adverse a club is to uh, contagions, I guess. Uh -huh. We're pretty adverse. Uh -huh. We're pretty. Adverse. All right. Uh, okay, uh, bylaws, Article 10, Section A, the officers shall be elected to the November Society meeting, November Society meeting from a slate of nominees presented by the nominating committee and delivered to the society not less than two weeks prior to the election. So the slate of nominees would have to be in by the end of this month at the latest. Yeah, and we decided that email is valid for sending out. Uh, about, uh, it, oh, it, uh, it further says, if the ballot is not filled or nominees cannot be acquired prior to the two-week deadline, then nominations can be taken from the floor at that time. At that meeting, yeah. Yeah. At that meeting, Okay. Uh, each society member is entitled one vote. Absentee voting is permitted, provided the vote is received by all members of the nominating committee prior to the election. So we could treat the emails as being absentee votes. Right. Okay. Just like in the last, yeah. So it's like the last presidential election, we could have a record absentee, absentee turnout. It would be great if three people from this group right here that would not accept any type of nomination be willing to accept those email nominations and just tally them. To be our committee. Yes. Yeah, all, all they'd have to do is uh, you could blast out an email and say, you know, re you, could, you could even do a reply to all. I don't think anybody would care if you were on there. So, for instance, and I'm going to... You know, if member A, B, and C, you send out an email and say, hey, we need nominations. We need to have them by this date. I have to get a slate to you by uh, October 31st. Um, please send your nominations to this email address, this email, and this email address. Something like that. And then all they'd have to do is get those emails and write down who did what. Anybody here willing? Anybody? I don't think it should be current board members, really. Especially not if they're going to be offering themselves up for again for next year. Yeah. Or be available even. Right. It's one way to make sure you don't even have to worry about getting nominated. There you go. Anyway, we're, we'll just get dead air from here. So we, we should probably just move on with the meeting. And moving on from here is any old business. Any, any other old business anyone wants to bring up? Any new business you want to bring up? Uh, 
Anybody had enough for one night? <laughs> I do have one question I'll ask about the banquet. Um, instead of starting at seven o'clock, you guys want to meet there at 6.30? A half an hour earlier than normal? I'm okay with that. Uh, that's, that's a Monday, right? Let me, let me yeah. Check. And the only reason I ask is I remember the last time we had a banquet, a couple people made a comment about it, you know, ending up being so late when we got out of there. And I don't remember, I, I need to look and see, but I think Golden Trail might even close at nine, which is no big deal. But um, if we started a little bit early, we could get out a little bit early. I don't know whether seven o'clock is too late for some people to eat. I'd be in favor it's of 6.30. Too, it's too late for me. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely in favor of an earlier time. Rusty, what do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Sam? I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So I, that's what I'll do is um, the, 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 gleaning over what this is, it, it looks like we're, we're going to do Golden Corral at 6.30 on Monday, November 15th. And I'll be sending it that out to this uh the, the, the 12 people that said that they were going to go. And then I'm going to send that out to the club saying, this is what we're doing. If you're interested, you have to let me know by Friday. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Any other new business? Stop yawning, Rusty. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'm hearing crickets. <laughs> if you want a... Uh you know, some sort of a presentation. I could do uh, one on Astronomical League observations I've made. I, I don't have you down as being able to go. I thought you guys were going to be out of town. Oh, no. I'm, I'm just talking. You, you're asking. You're talking about uh, new business, other new business. Oh, sorry about that. And... Um, you you had asked earlier. Robert had asked earlier about programs, and I could do something. Uh, I uh, photographed uh, the Astronomical League uh, globular clusters, and I've also photographed the uh, Astronomical League planetary nebulae. And I've I've got like ninety six planetary nebulae, and I've got I don't know, 73 or something like that, uh, globular clusters. <clears throat> if you don't, if you don't laugh too much, I could show you some of the photographs I got. Some are better than others, but. That sound good? I think, that, I think that'd be great. And Al, maybe you can help with this. Uh, you know, I'm kind of turned off with the Astronomical League. I think you're aware of that because I spent yeah. two years trying to sweet talk Carl to coming down to talk to our club and he blew us off all the time yet he came down the one time to talk with you guys and i wanted him to give us uh, an overview of what how the astronomical league can benefit our club and how uh, it benefits uh the hobby and like mm -hmm. i said i i spent that uh whole uh knackle event hanging out with him and like I said, I, I felt personally blown off or that I didn't really care about our club at all. So um, I think your program would be great, but if, if you could drop him a line to come talk to us. Yeah, I can, I can do that. This wasn't about the Astronomical League though. This is just, this is just the uh, photographs I've taken. It's a list of objects that they have. Yeah. And so my goal was to go out and, there. and photograph all, as many of them as I could. Yeah. I think that'd be great. Yeah. It just reminded me when, when it's an astronomical league list, it reminded me of my thoughts about them. So, so, I mean, if, if you want to, I could do that. Uh, or even no. if you wanted to, to join in and watch your presentation and then he could give us a five minute spiel or whatever. 
Well, yeah, I can, keep... I can invite okay. him. Because he might might enjoy seeing what you've got going on with that, too. Mm -hmm. How's that sound? I think it'd be great because I know a lot of people have talked about doing exactly what Alan's doing. You know, you go out and do these programs and actually image it to catch it. And the idea is that they have beautiful pictures on everything. It kind of is the, uh, it says sketching. You can image it and say, yeah, here it is. That's very cool. Alan, if you send me an email, I can put it on, uh, when I can put it on a meeting agenda. Okay. All right, great. Is there a good time of year to do that, Alan? When, um, like, is it like a, a Messier type of stuff or is it like these are galaxies and these are nebula or is it all like combined? Well, uh, the, of course, the globular clusters are just globular clusters and the planetary nebulas are just planetary nebulas. Uh, what I did is I started imaging both at the same time. And uh, so depending, you know, it just depended on where I was at at, at the particular uh, time that I started, but I, I started doing both of them. I finished the globular clusters ahead of the planetaries because you don't have to photograph quite as many to qualify for that one. Uh, and I, I don't think it matters when you start. Uh, it takes about a year to do it, typically. I, I would say it takes close to a year to do it. I wonder if like uh, the February meeting or maybe the March, depending on because we, we do our Messier marathon in March. So if we did your presentation before that, maybe that would entice people to come out and image them at that event because, you know, there'll be a lot of Messier objects out then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take uh, tremendous equipment to do this either. That's, a, that's the thing. It's, uh, you know, if I can do it, I'm sure a lot of you guys can do a better job even than, than I've done. I just use my DSLR for everything. Perfect. If you know how to set it, you know, you can you can get decent uh, pictures. They're, they're not going to win any contests, but. Yeah, I'll send you a note. <clears throat> Please. Please. All right, anything else? Going once. Going twice. Going twice and a half. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Do we have a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Hey. All as opposed, who cares? <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. Good, good meeting. Night, everybody. Uh, Thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Yep. Hey, Howard, say hi to Sarah. Okay, I will. Yeah, bye bye. Yep. Bye bye. Dr. Mitchell, we'll, I'll get those keys to you here. I'll either call ahead or something, make sure you're around. Okay. Okay. I don't live but a few blocks away. That sounds good. All right. All right. See you this week. Good night. Good night. Good night, Howard. All right.